climate change is real. It's happening all around us, and the most vulnerable are the hardest hit. In Africa, millions will suffer from climate change impacts on agriculture, water availability, ecosystem services, and biodiversity. According to leading experts, up to 250 million people in Africa will be exposed to increased water stress due to climate change by the year 2020. In some countries, yields from rain-fed agriculture could drop by up to 50%. The impact on local and national economies of such harvest failures would be devastating, especially to those who have the least, women and children. Zambia could lose about 0.4% uh, uh, of uh, GDP loss, 4.3 billion US dollars. That is the cost of doing nothing. Adapting to changing weather patterns and their destructive effects is crucial if people are to secure livelihoods and increase resilience to environmental hazards. Eastern and Southern Africa are not exceptions. Both harbor stunning biodiversity and both are famous for their welcoming people characteristic species and spectacular natural scenery. And yet these are all under threat from the increased intensity and irregularity of meteorological events. For the people, their diverse and complex livelihoods are heavily dependent on agriculture, water, forests and other sectors that are sensitive to climate change. It's urgent for countries in the region to take action to reduce vulnerability and enhance local communities' capacity to adapt. The International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN, has been working with three countries to do just that. In Mozambique, Tanzania and Zambia, IUCN staff members have been collaborating with national governments, local NGOs and selected communities on a pilot project funded by the government of Finland called the Climate Change and Development Project, or CCDP. The CCDP project was developed with the aim of uh, ensuring that policies and strategies reach to activities that emphasize the role of water and forests in adapting to climate change in the region. The project started by selecting a variety of working sites within each country, from dry inland communities to humid coastal zones, all experiencing the same threat, loss of livelihoods and security due to changing and unpredictable weather patterns. The role of ecosystems in supporting human adaptation and development has been severely underestimated. Our work in Mozambique is being coordinated by Roberto Zorio, who is our national project coordinator. The Mozambican economy uh, is really dependent on the on the ecosystem, resource extraction. Mozambique uh, being a downstream country and a, a coastal country, the climate change is affecting the whole sector of economic development in the country. Most of our population live in the coastal zones. The frequency of uh, tropical cyclones, sea level rising, those communities are losing their land for agriculture. On the other hand, also the floods have been very frequent in the last 10 years and this has been uh, affecting human life and also in terms of infrastructure as well. Mozambique is also prone to a prolonged drought, especially in the corner of the north of the Gaza province. And then the rainfall is getting scarce and the droughts are getting more prolonged. The community of Katine situated in the buffer zone of a national park, is remote, inland and very dry. Because of climate change, the area has been receiving even less rain than before. This puts increasing pressure on the community, which depends more than ever on the surrounding forests for food, health and income. One of the first things Roberto did in Catine was to work with villagers and, using local memory, plot major weather events going back to the first half of the 20th century. What they found was stunning confirmation of rapid climate change in recent decades. When they saw that uh, the calendar, they said, yes, this is true, uh, and we can see. Now I think they are a bit more aware about the impact of the climate change in this region. The community then worked with Roberto and local authorities to assess the extent and nature of its vulnerability to climate change impacts. The climate hazard in this region is mostly the droughts and high temperatures. Next, 
the community looked at ways in which people were already trying to adapt and identified other coping strategies it could use. Exercises known as visioning allowed the community to plan for the ideal response to climatic and other threats. They list all their coping strategies. It was immediately clear that water scarcity was a very serious issue, and so CCDP contributed a solar panel to power the borehole pump. When it built a community centre for processing non-timber forest products, it included a system to harvest rainwater as well. Due to drought and dryness, agriculture is a poor option in Katina. The community is heavily dependent on the surrounding trees and forests for food, medicine and fuel. So local people then examined how they could improve the sustainability of harvesting non-timber forest products and explored how to conserve them so as to better ensure food security between periods of harvest and during times of hardship, such as drought. We found out that the community they use more than 28 non-timber forest products. The strychnus, there are two varieties or two species. One is this, um, the local name is called uh, Masala, and this one is, uh, is Makwaku. The whole of our objective was to help the community to process these fruits so they can keep them for much longer for the time they need it. Katine is part of Chigubo district, where government staff have received training from IUCN's CCDP project on climate change awareness and adaptation responses such as conservation farming. District Director Felipe Gilberto Massevilla is acutely aware of the importance of taking an ecosystem-based approach. I think that we can even say that the population of this district depends very, very, very do ecosystema existente. The people of Katine and the district have benefited from collaboration with IUCN and its expertise in helping them cope with the climatic pressures they face. At the same time, the experience and the lessons learned here will be shared with the people of neighbouring villages and districts who already clearly recognise the success of the CCDP project so far. If you buy a camisa bonita, it's the other one who doesn't have Hundreds of miles further south, in the district of Shai Shai, at the mouth of the Limpopo River, plentiful rainfall is not a problem. But climate change has had devastating impacts here too. At the river mouth, in addition to other landscape dynamics, coastal degradation caused by excessive and irregular flooding of the Limpopo has led to the destruction of vast swathes of mangrove forest. So far, these forests have maintained the coastline. Their disappearance and degradation means that coastal communities are even more vulnerable to the ocean's further encroachment. IUCN has worked closely with the local NGO, the maritime authorities and local communities to try to restore the destroyed forests. On the other side of the river, where the original mangroves are still intact, people have started careful harvesting and rearing of seedlings, a first step in replacing the degraded forests on the other bank. Once strong enough to be replanted, the seedlings are eventually transported to the deforested area and replanted by communities. Total reforestation lies some way ahead, but the process has started. As in rain-starved Katine, the experience and lessons learned in Shai Shai will be transferred to other contexts. Those involved are well aware, however, that any chance of succeeding in the race to adapt to climate change depends entirely on the collaboration and representation of everyone involved. Realmente tem que haver um compromisso muito forte da parte do governo, da parte mesmo da sociedade civil, para conseguir ir avante e alcançar os objetivos. The key importance of collaboration and of getting the process right also shines through in what IUCN has been doing in Tanzania. On the banks of the Rafiji River, people have been naturally adapting to the periodical flooding for generations. But the predictability of the seasons has changed in recent years due to climate change. The inhabitants of Nyamwinwili village cross the Rafiji River to reach their fields, but getting enough rain for crops at the right time is no longer a given. Alfe Daniel and IUCN worked with the villages to develop an action plan for community watershed management. As a result, 
They have now installed an irrigation system powered by a foot pump. It draws water from the river to a cistern in the fields, water that can then be used for crop irrigation as and when needed by the villagers. Even this first harvest of maize has been greatly improved by the irrigation system and the results are in stark contrast with those of other field crops in the area that have not been irrigated. The plan is now to extend the irrigation network to water neighbouring fields of maize and okra. This will mean even better harvests, providing more maize for home consumption and for sale in local markets, which guarantees the community both income and food security. Conservation farming of mixed crops, as taught by CCDP, will further strengthen that security. The success in Nyamwinwili has caught the eye of neighbouring villages. They plan to install similar irrigation systems and to learn the practices of conservation farming from the Nyamwinwili community. Working together, IUCN, local government and village representatives, everyone is benefiting and no one is happier than the community itself. Further down the river, in Nyamwimbe village, preparations are in full swing for World Environment Day celebrations. Here, Alfe Daniel, the community and local authorities have been implementing IUCN's CCDP approach, working very closely with Simon John Mosher from local NGO Tanzania Forest Conservation Group. Together, they are harvesting seedlings from healthy forests in order to restore degraded areas and re-establish traditional water sources. And we are working in collaboration with communities and local government on participatory forest management. We realized that there is a lot of tree cutting, that is why water sources become scarce in Nyamwimbe. So we now have a plan to review the management plan to include water sources. The planning and implementation of gradually restoring the area to something resembling its original forested state is a step-by-step -step collaborative process. Women, who are most often the ones gathering water for families, are equally represented throughout. Women are also heavily involved in CCDP's work further north in Tanzania, in the Pangani River Basin. A prime example is the head of the adapted poultry group in the community of Mbunguni. There, the vulnerability analysis undertaken by IUCN has shown that major improvements could be made to food and economic security in the village if the local species of hen were crossbred with the cockerels of another breed, making them more resilient. Kwa hiyo mpaka sasa hivi mafanikio ya umradi unatusaidia sana sisi wakina mama kuuza mayai na kuweza kuwapeleka watoto shule na kupata chakula na pia michango mbalimbali. In the nearby community of Shambarai Burka, which like Katine in Mozambique is suffering from recurring droughts, it was again established that pre-investing in water supply was a must before moving on to other adaptive approaches such as conservation farming. As a result, a new borehole was built and is now almost ready to use. Shamparai is home to many Maasai, whose traditional way of living has been under threat due to the pressures of climate change. In both Pangani sites, IUCN has also been training communities and local authorities in climate change awareness and adaptive approaches like conservation farming. One of the project's main and ongoing training goals is to make sure that women are fairly represented. Tanzania as a whole has been progressive in emphasizing gender considerations with the representation of women firmly written into many policies. In African culture, uh, females have the main role of providing food to the family. And they're the ones who are doing the agriculture. So it means if you educate a woman how to farm well, how to provide a balanced meal to the family, and how to use the resources well without degrading them, then you have made something very good because they are their roads to provide food. Inclusive processes and better decision-making have been important results of the project so far. They show how vital systems must be in place in order to link coping strategies on the ground with national policies for adapting to climate change. These systems were important to be built because they are the governance systems that will help in getting people when they engage in this adaptation exercise, when they make an investment, how decisions are made, how do they get to manage it, to ensure that whatever invested is not wasted. On top of working to turn the CCDP project's findings into policy recommendations, 
Excellent Hachileka's work with the government in Zambia itself also looks at resolving other national challenges, such as the widespread and unsustainable harvesting of timber to make charcoal. Vulnerability assessments of two Zambian communities in Kapiri and Boshi district also identified uncontrolled burning to clear fields as an unsustainable environmental threat. Recommendations for adaptation have also led to techniques of conservation farming similar to those found in Mozambique and Tanzania. Adapted beekeeping is another recommended approach that has been taken up. This farmer, who eagerly took the advice to switch from traditional hives to more sustainable, productive varieties, is a model example of someone who has worked to ensure a diversity in his crops, food sources and income generating activities. This will ensure a livelihood for him and his family that is more resilient to adverse impacts, such as those caused by climate change. But there is a long way to go before all, or even many of the communities in Zambia and neighboring countries are resilient enough to be able to cope with the effects of climate change as best they can. An important lesson learned in implementing the Climate Change and Development Project has been the importance of addressing the immediate, underlying socio-economic conditions that will increase vulnerability to climate change. This can be done, for example, by improving the management of water and forest resources. But it should be noted that this project goes beyond the immediate needs for food and water. Through it, IUCN has been piloting an ecosystem approach to adaptation, harvesting the goods and services that nature can provide and better preparing the communities for the challenges they face, now and into the future. The real impact of the program, however, will be to influence national, regional and international approaches and policies dealing with climate change. This has already started to happen, with national leaders and international actors recognizing the issues at hand and the work done in partnership with IUCN. The Ministry of Health, the health sector, agriculture sector, water and the energy sectors, even the Ministry of Works and Supply in terms of infrastructure is also affected. So once the agriculture sector is impacted negatively, means the larger population of the country is also impacted. Food production, food security is affected. The farming community would depend on a natural uh, a regeneration of the environment means that biodiversity must be enhanced, otherwise productivity will really diminish. So I think IUCN, uh, the project itself, um, um, is one of the few you know, that have really been working on the ground with the communities to try and test some of these adaptation technologies. And then our work with the project is to try and scale up what has worked and again, not only in Zambia, but also across you know, the three countries and possibly you know, even the rest of Africa. Adaptation to the effects of climate change requires a long-term, ongoing investment from all of us. It simply cannot happen overnight. Through this work over the past three years, IUCN and its partners have already made a tangible difference to the communities at the project sites in Mozambique, Tanzania and Zambia by reducing their climate vulnerability. Our next step is to take this learning forward to national and international policy makers. This way we will be contributing to the very real and urgent need to adapt to climate change in Africa and beyond, therefore safeguarding human livelihoods and the ecosystems upon which we all depend. Lava <laughs> <laughs>